It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. With £200 each. I like, I like, I like. A classic car <laughs> and a gold scar Britain for antiques. The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction, but it's no mean feat. There'll be worthy winners and valiant losers. It's fine. So, will it be the high road to glory? <laughs> A slow road to disaster. Pull out the ignition. This is the Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. Stop everything. It's time for the second instalment of our road trip excitement with Christina Trevanian and James Braxton. Oh, I feel giddy at the prospect. Oh, it's... Oh, oh my oh. goodness. Uh, just stay, stay, stay calm. Stay calm. Everybody stay calm. OK. <laughs> Arctic. This is that we are the polar explorers of antiques. Exactly. <laughs> Great Scott, eh? This leg we have James showing he has a real nose for antiques. So I'm amongst the carpet. Right you are then. And Christina tells us about her undergarments. Got five vests on today. Lots and lots and lots. Blimey, what's going on? But who has James dressed as today? You look like a, as a mix between a French... You should look like some garlic around your neck. Yeah, I know. I should have a string of string of cloves yeah. around my neck. Really but that's to ward off the devil, isn't it? Oh, is it? Yeah. She's right. It's garlic, not cloves. From her original £200, Christina has £216.48. pence. James also began with £200, and he's just in front with a total of £225.94. and pennies. It's a close one. How exciting. And they still got the stately 1965 Jaguar Mark II to parade around in. Not four-wheel drive, though. Watch out. This is proper Wonderland. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Do you know, we've had no <laughs> snow this uh, year. This is wildly I know. Exciting. This is very exciting, isn't it? Yep. Typical summer in Scotland. This road trip, kicked off in Northumberland, has auctioned in Hamilton and will continue onwards to Lancashire, Greater Manchester, Merseyside, Tynham Weir, and will cross the border once more with a concluding auction in air on the west coast of Scotland. Today, our adventure begins in the spectacular climbs of the snowy Trossachs in Scotland. We kick off in Ward Toll, just south of Aberfoyle, and auction later in Bolton in Greater Manchester. Warm enough in the car for you two? Well, that's a good thing about having a travel rug, because I am very warm in the trossets. Yeah, I'm so... <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's good to know. <laughs> Too much detail. We've left the snow and hills behind. Let's begin our antiques exploration with James at Country Homes Antiques. Do you want me to take your blanket, Grandpa? No. Um, no, I'm going to take my blanket. Enjoy. Just in case. Thank you. Have fun. Have fun. Spend wisely. I will, I will. Now for a good old rummage. <laughs> ah, lovely hot colours. So there's lots of interesting items here. Oh, yummy, yummy, yummy. If this was by the Swiss artist Giacometti, this would probably make millions. So, uh, interesting proposition, you know. Has the hand of fortune been laid on James Braxton today? Who knows? Ooh, what about this handsome fellow? That's nice. Always, when you look at a picture, it, the good thing is, is you want the whole thing to be as one, and you want the frame to be contemporary with the period of the picture. And this is wholly typical of a late 19th century picture. So we've got all on canvas here, quite flat. It looks as though it could do with a bit of a varnish. This noble foxhound is priced at £140. As a nation that loves doggies, this could be a good dee. Now, Andrew. Andrew. So what we got? So I like the picture of the foxhound. Yes. Would 70 buy it? Mm, probably not, but 80 what, would. 80 would buy it? 80 would buy it. How about, how about 75, Andrew? 75, go I on, put it there, that. Chief. I think we could do that. Well, thank you. Yeah, I suppose you want some money, don't you? 
<laughs> you, you rapacious antique dealers, you always want the money, don't you? They want one. 20. Two. 40. Three. 60. Four. Uh -huh. 80. I'll put one more in there and I'm going to give you this. For 25 pounds. 25 pounds. I think you'll do Poons. very, very well with it. It's a charming little thing. It's authentic, original, 18th century Chinese. And it's just got your name written all over it. So you want another 20 quid? Another so, 20 pounds. So this is going to cost me 25? 25 quid. 75, 25. 100 pounds all together. Oh, Andrew. God, this could be this could be the end of me. Oh, this you've got more. You should, Come on. You should stay I'm, a little bit longer. It's, it's I'm, a little peeling, bit more. I'm peeling off the 20s. Very there nice, are. very there nice. Are. Thank you. Very good doing business with you. Thank you, James. The very first shop, and James is splashing the cash again. £100 straight off. Blimey, what's going on? Elsewhere, Christina is purring the jag to the town of Doon in Stirlingshire. Oh, it's a lovely view. Well, of Christina. Oh, Bonnie Prince Charlie passed through Dune on his way to see Camilla. Oh, oh, no, not in the earlier one, in the 18th century. Today, it's Christina's turn, though. She'd better get her sleeves rolled up because there are loads of dealers selling their wares in here. Goes on and on and on. Mustn't get distracted by sparkly things. Mustn't, 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 must concentrate. Outside, there's a barn to rummage in, too. Now, what's lurking in here? Oh, this is better. Much more natural environment for the Trevanian in a barn, happily having a rummage. That. Mahogany chest of drawers, what's that? Two over three inlaid chest, £115. When it says two over three, clearly it means you've got two short drawers over three long drawers. So you've got socks, you've got pants, you've got vests, more vests, and more vests in my case, especially when you're working in Scotland, which is jolly chilly. I've got five vests on today, lots and lots and lots. Oh no, not more detail. Let's have a little look. What have we got here? We've got stained collector's box. That's quite interesting, isn't it? Mm, I quite like that. Oh, it's a bit of an ugly duckling on the outside, isn't it? It's been seriously stained with what looks like treacle. But you open it up and it's really quite a beautiful box. I wonder what you put in there. Maybe, maybe you would have had shells or Maybe a painter's box or something. It's quite big, isn't it? Really beautifully made. Probably about... Oh, look at that. What does that say? Oh. May, from her father. 17th of August, 1931. Oh, I love that. That's gorgeous. Right, that sold it to me. Let's go and see what they can do it for. She doesn't hang about that girl. Let's find Shell the Pearl to talk cash. Ah. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, Shirley. Yes. While I was in the barn, I found this. It's got £22 on it, I think. Yeah. Yes. What could be your best price on that, Shirley? Well, since it's you, for a battered old box, do this. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it for 20 Would you? Yes. Magic. £20. I'm not going to argue with that. Back to the lovely Jag. Oh. She's certainly holding on to her pennies today. Ugh. Meanwhile, James has travelled to the district of Govan in Glasgow. He's come to Govan Old Parish Church to see the discoveries that have been unearthed from the churchyard, royal secrets that lay undisturbed for over a thousand years. Gosh. Hello, James. Welcome. This is uh, Govan Old Parish Church, and I'm uh, Professor Stephen Driscoll, and would you like to come in? I'd love to. How long has there been a church on this site? We think there's been a church here for about 1,400 years, a series of churches, really. And in the 10th and 11th centuries, it seems to have been the main religious centre for the kings of Strathclyde. 
The chance discoveries determined Govan as one of the earliest seats of Christianity in Scotland and as a powerful royal centre. Here is one of the most precious and earliest relics, an ancient sarcophagus. This is made for St. Constantine, and this church is dedicated to Constantine, and Constantine was the king of the Picts, and he was a royal martyr killed in 876. This monolithic sarcophagus is an exceptional discovery because there is nothing else quite like it in the UK. What does a find like this tell us about Strathclyde at the time? It really uh, tells us that we're looking at a, a highly important place. This is an utterly unique monument, and once it's enshrined, it becomes a magnet for high-status burial, and the churchyard over the centuries becomes full of very important burials. In the year 870, a new power arrives in the form of marauding Vikings from Denmark and Norway. This burial ground of the elite reveals their influence in the most remarkable way. What are these extraordinarily alien objects? These are burial monuments from the Viking Age, and they're meant to represent buildings. So these little rectangular panels are representing um, timber shingles. They look like scales, but they're yeah. really they're roof tiles. Yeah. But there's such a difference between the style of this hog's back yeah. to St Constantine's it, sarcophagus, isn't it, there? Couldn't agree with you more. These are a really distinctive monument. These are really, they're making a statement about yeah. their place in the world and, yeah. and the ideology of this, which presumably they're kind of representing the chieftain's hall. You know, they're particularly kind of meant to glamorize the power of the chief. A great political center and a burial ground where the powerful wanted to be laid to rest proves that a millennium ago, Govan was the most important place in the west of Scotland. And just before we leave, sculptor Clark Innes is going to test the craftsman skills of James Braxton. Now, what, what, what's this based on? Uh, this is a, a representation uh, of the sunstone here in Govan Church on a bit of reclaimed sandstone that was lying out the back. And it's just steady chipping away, is it? And what, what, what's this piece here? This is a small piece uh, representing um, some interlacing. Yeah. Interlacing is just, uh, as you can see, a kind of ribbon effect on stone. Yeah. This is a kind of Celtic meat, Saxon art. OK, OK. Uh, and it's termed insular art. Come on, can I have a go? Yeah, sure. There you are. Let's get pecking. <laughs> Peck away. Like that? Yeah, and slightly... Uh, and find the pecks? Yeah. How long will these, this carving last, do you think? Well, if these stones were stored correctly, yeah. indefinitely, really? they would last forever. Yeah. yeah. So it's just weather? It's just weather, yeah. But there's no such thing as... Uh, as, as bad weather, it's mainly poor clothing, isn't it? Yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Not for the stones. Though. Not for the stains. <laughs> God, he's a chip off the old block, James, isn't he? Now, back to Christina. She's in the Broomy Law district of Glasgow, searching for some winning antiques. Glasgow City Antiques is bursting at the seams with a huge selection of treasures. Christina has just under £200 to spend in here. Lions, it's huge. A lot of furniture, a lot of brown. Hey, this is more like it. So we've got in here some dinky little silver framed, yeah, nice hallmark on there, Birmingham silver hallmark. Uh, photograph frames, and this one has gone in a lovely portrait or photograph of a chap who is clearly in the RAF. Birmingham 1930 sterling silver frame, £25. The thing about silver frames is that at auction they're always eternally popular because they're still usable today. It's quite cute, and there's actually another couple in here as well. Oh gosh, that has seen better days, and that's actually got a split in the side there, which is a shame. How much is that one? £20. And that's not actually marked by the looks of it. There's another one. Okay, that's not silver. But they'd be quite fun, wouldn't they? 
Christina also finds a little Art Nouveau chappy here too, priced at £30. Could be a nice group lot. Now, where's dealer Sally? Sally? Ooh, the sparklies, <laughs> my goodness. I picked those up from a cupboard over oh, right. there. Okay, so, okay. I think, are these yours as well? Yes, they are. Oh, yes. they are, magic. Ooh, wonderful. So, I was looking at that. Yes. What's that? It's a guard chain, but it's not gold, sadly. It's just gold plate. So, but I'll be able to do you a nice price on it. Though. Oh, that's what I like. I, haven't even looked I at got it, yet, it in so. a job lot and I was praying it was gold. You've got that little swivel on the bottom, which you would have put your watch on originally, but that actually would make quite a nice... I mean, look at why did that little photo pendant there. What's that? Is oh, that, yeah, that's is that, rose gold, yeah. Is that nine carat gold? Nine carat, I think, yeah. Sort of clipped onto the bottom. Would make really quite a nice... That's lovely. Sort of little pendant, wouldn't it? They Especially go nicely together, black, yeah. If you put it against black. Yeah. Anywhere. OK, Sally, so, so let's talk um, turkey. Yes. What can we do for that? For that. And um, I just sort of got a little group of little frames. photograph frames together before, which okay. were potentially something, maybe as a bit of a, as a group lot. How about if we did the whole lot for 90? Could we say 80 for the whole lot? And I'm a happy bunny. Yes, okay. Is that all right? Yes. We'll go 80 pounds. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you very much. No problem at all. That's fab. Anything Ooh. else? Okay. Now, um, thinking about it, there were some spoons over there. All right, okay. Do you mind if I just go and yeah, grab I'll, them? Because yeah, I think they might be Have a, a potential. Um, ah, these. Oh, I think they're David Anderson. Scandinavian designer David Anderson established his company in 1876 in Oslo and the name is synonymous with fine quality. Plated silver serving spoons. Oh, so they're plated, okay. 30 pounds a pair. What do you think on those? What have I got on 30? Well, we're on 80 at the moment. What if yeah. I do 95 for everything? 95? I'm a happy girl, Sally. Let's good. shake hands again. We're becoming very good friends. We really are. <laughs> <laughs> Well, after that trolley dash, Christina's got the spoons for 15, the frames for 40, and the Victorian necklace also for 40. It's been a busy old day for our experts. Time for a rest. Nighty night. Rise and shine. Our pair are on the move once more. Morning, Grandpa. Morning, morning, How morning. How are you what, over hey, there what, with your blankets over your knees? Well, uh, uh, the, the great adage is any fool can be uncomfortable. <laughs> so if you look after your knees, the Queen, you know, she's no, she always has a little travel run. Yeah, but you're not the Queen. Let's remind ourselves of what our lovely twosome has bought thus far. Christina has four lots. The collector's box, the collection of photograph frames, a Victorian necklace, and a pair of silver plated spoons. She has 101 pounds and 48 pence for the day ahead. Our current leader, James, has been spending money too, but he only has two lots. He has the foxhound oil on canvas and the small 18th century bronze pot, leaving him 125 pounds and 94 pence. James has commandeered the jag and made his way to the Woodlands area of Glasgow. The cave antique shop is his next stop. Sounds just the thing for our James. Well, there's lots of these little reduced labels all over the place, but what I'm really after is I'm after something history. That's what sells history. Owner Ali is a man of means and also has another shop across the road for James to have a nosy in. There are. So I'm amongst, amongst the carpets. Mm. I think in a former life, I must have lived in somewhere like Marrakesh or, you know, Fez or Jerez or something like that. I'm irresistibly drawn to carpets. He's a passionate soul. Look, what's this? You see, also, I am illiterate, you know, base metal Braxton. I do love copper. There's something really lovely about copper. It's got a good weight, this. What would this be? A bin. It's got a very Glasgow arts and crafts Arabic numeral there, hasn't it? Two. What have we got? Uh, sale. It's reduced for early sale, 45. It's still 
Too expensive, really. Stand by Ali. I found this bin, Ali. That's a good one. O on the floor. Nice bit of copper. Now, if I said to you 18, what would you say, Ali? I can do it for 25. 25. What about 20? Me to you, you to me. 20? If we make a profit for you, why not? Why not? Thank you, Ali. Let's put it there. James's third buy, eh? And for £20. Nice. Christina's made her way to East Kilbride, the largest town in South Lanarkshire. As a farmer's wife, Christina has come to hear how two Scots revolutionised crop harvest in the 19th century. Curator Elaine Edwards knows the story, and it all starts with a sickle. So, Elaine, tell me why you've just handed me this um, rather menacing looking thing here. Hmm. Well, before mechanisation, of course, reaping and threshing was all done by hand, mm -hmm. and it was done in the same way over centuries. So, is this all you'd need as a farmer? Pretty much to get your crop in and to separate it from the straw. And to separate the wheat from the husk, you need this implement, a threshing flail. So, when you're threshing, I mean, that's quite a fizz... Oh, my gosh! That's really heavy, isn't it? Yeah, it is quite heavy. Gosh, I mean, you would have had serious muscles if you were a, a, a thresher. Yes. Indeed you did. And in 1828, a Scottish minister came up with an idea that would start the beginnings of transforming this heavy physical process. The next stage was mechanisation. Um, Patrick Bell devised what's now known as Bell's Reaper. And it was cutting the crop using a scissor action. But there was a snag. The horse pushed the machine rather than pulling it, which meant the farmer couldn't determine quickly enough when a jam occurred in the machinery. However, four of them were sent to America and Patrick Bell hadn't patented it. He wanted to use it for the benefit of mankind, basically. And a company called McCormack picked up on it and did improve on it greatly. So they got over this problem of the, the crop jamming the equipment and they then patented it. Oh, no! Meanwhile, Andrew Meikle, another Scot, was developing a mechanical threshing process. He developed in the 1780s what's now known as a Meikle threshing mill. Mm -hmm. And we have an example of that here at the museum. This is the Brecker Rendell mill from Orkney that dates from 1804. Gosh, that's really early, it isn't is it? It's really early, yeah, yeah. And it's reputedly the world's oldest surviving threshing mill. Standing at 21 feet, this complex machine was expensive, so only the larger, wealthier farms could afford one, but it signalled a sea change in arable farming. When did they come together to create what we now know as the modern combine harvester? Well, probably earlier than most people think, actually, because some of the early combines were actually pulled by horses. Mm. And we have an example here at the museum, it's called the Caterpillar and up to 30 horses would have actually pulled this combine. Wow. They didn't really take off in Scotland because the farms basically aren't big enough. So yeah, and who has 30 horses? Yeah, indeed. Yeah. So they were used more in America, the big plains in America. Mm. But then relatively quickly from that, you get tractor pulled combines. Mm -hmm. And relatively quickly after that again, we get the combination of the self-propelled combine harvester. A man with a sickle can reap a quarter of an acre of wheat a day. A man with a combine harvester can reap 800 times that amount. Ooh. Aha! Here we are. Yes, so this is the Massey Harris 726. Right. That was produced in Kilmarnock, mm -hmm. and it was the first European-produced self-propelled combine harvester. Oh, right. So what date is this? 1948. Gosh, that is quite early, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And it's very recognisable, isn't it? And you look at it and it clearly is a combine harvester. Yes. That you would recognise today yeah, as well. that's right. Yeah. And of course the name comes from the fact that you were combining, combining the process of reaping, threshing, winnowing all into one, hence combine harvester. So we've come an awfully long way from the, the scythe, the sickle and the, and the flail, haven't we? We have, yeah in a relatively short space of time. Yeah. And it could be argued that this implement is the one that revolutionised the industry and no other has had such an impact. And such a transformative effect. Yeah.
back to James in the Jag. So driving into Largs, wanting to have an ice cream, but first I've got to buy some antiques. I've got to beat that Christina. Always thinking of his tum, that one. James is visiting the seaside town of Largs in North Ayrshire. The name comes from the Scottish Gaelic, meaning slopes. And not one to slope about is our James. He's heading in here to spend his pennies. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Oh, hello. Lovely to see you again, James. Hello. You? Hi. You've met Bobby before, have you? Not? I have. Yes, yes. He's a star of the show. Lovely soft coat. Oh, Bobby, that wasn't a growl, was it? No, not at all. <laughs> always pleased to see you, James. Always pleased to see you. Down boy. Anyway, I wouldn't be too sure of him, Bobby. Not with a hat like that. Our James has just a smidge over £105 to spend in here. Quick up and hurry. Christina is on her way. I've got first dibs of the treasures. First dibs of the treasures. I better find something. Look at that. There's a bomb. There's a bomb and a half. God, that's got some weight as well. I wonder if that was for sounding. God, that, that is very heavy. That would have been dragged along by a ship, wouldn't it? I doubt it. This World War II bomb case may have been an aerial training bomb. Where'd you get it from, Franco? An old retired officer brought it in to me. Yeah. And I uh, bought it from and I thought I'd have a go at it. Uh, I just took it to pieces, just curious to see what was inside it. It's empty. Ever heard of the bomb disposal squad? Now, Christina's on her way to Largs with just over £100 in her purse. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Service. Hello. 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 Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? Welcome to Narducci Antiques. Why, thank you very much. Have Who's you met Bobby before? This is Bobby. Bobby. He's the star of the show. Is he? Yeah, well, apart from Surely you. Surely that's James. <laughs> <Not sure>. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Hi, gorgeous. Hello, and who yes, are you, sir? Jock. 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 Nice lovely to meet you, nice to Jock. Meet you. Very lovely to meet you. Right. Who's going to help me? I will. <laughs> Oh, come on then, guys. Let's go and have a look round. I think you've drawn the short straw here, Chief. Let me see you. Sorry, Jim. See you in about now. OK, bye, boys. Be lucky. Looking very cool. So what have we got? Oh, lovely. What about this uh, vintage prop? It's an old propeller from a plane with it's been converted to a, a clock. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah a lovely lady. Lovely lady. We've got a lovely lady uh, statue. OK. Lovely. Yeah. A nice bottle of vintage uh, brandy. Would that? No, no. Oh, not so much. Not, not, no. not quite so early in the day, maybe. No. A thistle. A thistle. A thistle. What? Lovely. Guys, I wonder whether James might need your help at the desk. Do you want to maybe go and help him? We're not wanted, Jock. We're not wanted. Want no, we're not wanted. Exit. Three old dogs alone at last. Now, how about a price for James on the World War II shell case? Franco, own up. Eighty quid. Hey, cool. I think that's top money for auction. Do you think? Yeah, I think it's. I think it's really got to be sort of south of forty, <sighs> south of forty. James, 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 James. Franco, Franco, Franco. I tell you what I'll do. Since it's you. Yeah. What? Give me a friendly fifty. Friendly fifty. A nifty fifty. H how about how, how about an unfriendly forty-five? Forty-seven. Forty-seven fifty. Well done. <laughs> fifty. Okay, I got an extra fifty <laughs> pence for you. Okay. okay. I've went from eighty, well, 80 pounds well, to forty-seven well fifty. Oh. Well, we got there in the end. That's a kind discount of thirty-two pounds fifty. Ah! While James is looking for something else, what of Christina? Okay. We've also got some oars here as well. Look at these. There's no pair. There's two. There's one there as well. They look quite modern, aren't they? But I mean, they'd look quite nice as a display, wouldn't they, on a pub? you painted them or something, they'd be quite fun. There's no prices on anything yet. Just a bit worrying. Never fear, Jock is here. What could be your best price on the oars? 15. Come on, you know you want them, you know. We went to the sunset. Do you think we could row off together into oh, the sunset? Oh, well, I think my wife may object. Oh, OK. <laughs> 15 pounds, Jock. I'm Deal. happy, girl. It's Thank a you very much. Another lot for Christina to take to auction. Well done. Now, what's James found? Look at that. This is great. What a great shape. There's a solid, solid member of the armed forces there. A lovely walrus moustache. And here, here is your regimental sergeant major barking out orders. He's a, he's a man, a very solid stance there. Good tummy. 
He's very good, isn't he? Good design should always have humour, and this has humour in buckets. Um, I rather like that. So uh, it's got a mark on the bottom. It's uh, Devon Pottery from Bobby Tracy Pottery, and they did these rather nice figures. Isn't that great? The Bovey Tracy Potteries in Devon began in the mid-18th century and lasted about 200 years. This little chap is priced at £35. Let's go and find Franco. Franco, I think I've found something. Good, good, I'm pleased. Sergeant Major. Sergeant Major, he looks... He, a solid fellow, isn't he? He is, he is. What could you do on that? What's your lowest? £30. 20 chief. That's my final. I tell you, we'll round 20. it off. We're at 47.50 for the bomb. What about uh, 2250? Gives it to 70 quid in total. Go on, put it there. We have a deal. We have a deal. There we have it then. The Bavi figure and the World War II bomb case for £70 completes our second leg shopping extravaganza. I wore a beret at school for five years. So the only problem with a beret is that yeah. you get one cold ear, don't you? All the time. <laughs> you always, you always got to keep one ear open for predators. <laughs> Just in case. Just in case. <laughs> Crikey. I think it's best you two get some shut-eye straight away. It's off to auction we go. We've made our way to the town of Bolton in Greater Manchester for our second leg decider. It's here that a recent survey places Boltonians as the friendliest in the country. Give up all hope, ye who enter here. <laughs> Don't be like that. Today's sale is being held in the former Metropolitan Library at Bolton Auction Rooms. Our pair are looking very smart today. Look at them. James opted to splash his cash with a total spend of £190 on five lots while Christina was rather cautious and has spent a total of £135 on five lots. The verdict on one another's buys today, please. Look at him. I mean, first thing in the morning, he even looks a little bit scary, doesn't he? He's barking instructions at his platoon, bless him. It's a lovely thing. It's a very lovely thing. Nicely marked. I'm sure there'll be a good collector's market for him. I like him. As a rur myself, I have a natural affinity to oars, but uh, whether oars strike the right note in the auction room in the middle of Greater Manchester, I don't know. It might be she is up the river with no paddle. Harry Howcroft is today's auctioneer. What does he think of their offering? The Foxhound, uh, we really like this one. There's been a lot of interest on the internet. And I think we've got a couple of form bids on that one as well. The David Anderson spoons, anything Scandinavian design at the moment is on fire. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Harry. The auction is about to begin. Today, we're also open for internet bidders. I think we might have just bought something. <laughs> First up, it's James's oil on canvas of the noble foxhound. I've got. Competing bids oh, and £55.60 anywhere. £60 I pounds already? Bid, 60 anywhere. 60, 65, 70, See? 75, 80, See? 85, 90, 95. Perfect. It's in the room at £95 bid. 100, 110, uh, 110, oh, 120, 130, 140, 150, £140 bid. 140 pound bid. Almost the good money. people of Bolton. Yeah. <laughs> 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 £140 bid. Uh, 150, 160 now. £150 bid. Is 160 anywhere? £150. Yeah. 160 is back in at 160. 160 back uh, in. They haven't quite finished uh, yet. Okay. Enough already. In, in the foyer for 160 Oh, congratulations. Lovely painting, lovely painting. What a lovely man. I Taxi do like that. Taxi for Trevanian. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and this lovely doggy sold for a very lovely price. I'm on double my oh, money. Yeah. So, I'm in Worrying. uncharted waters. <laughs> Christina's turn next with the collector's box. Here it is. I can go in at 32, 34 I need. Uh, 30, 34, 36, 38, it's in the room at 30, 38 pound bid. 
40 anyway, 38 pound bed. Oh, I'm 40, 42 in the room. I'm 42 in the room now. It's in the room, gents seated. Uh, 42 pound bed, 44 on need. I'm uh, 44, 46, and internet gets it at 44 pound bed. Uh, 44 pounds. Decent sized profit, uh, Christina. That's all right, I'll take that's that. Right. Yeah, take that's a profit. That. Now for James's mystery bronze 18th century pot. 60 million? Uh, 70 million? No. 25 pounds. <laughs> Probably no. twenty-five pounds. <laughs> I got forty-eight pound with me on commission. Oh, stop smiling. Otherwise, Christine. Forty-eight pound with me. Seriously. Uh, forty-eight fifty anyway. Uh, fifty-five I need. Here we go. Uh, Internet yeah. bid. Internet bid. Come on. Uh, Internet bid. Sixty million. Uh, Sixty million. Forty-eight pound bid. Uh, Forty-five pound. Uh, Forty-five pound. 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 Blooming act, James. You've got the eye. Beginner's luck, Christina. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Beginner's luck. <laughs> Very modest. He's out in front, James. Now Christina's collection of photo frames. I can go straight in at 38, 40 anywhere. 38 pound bed. Uh, in profit, are you in profit? No, I'm not, because I need 40 pounds for it. You buy the lot, but then I've got 40, 40 so on the net. commission, a 42 pound bed. Uh, 42 pound bed with me. Hold on, 40, you buy the lot for 42 pounds. You want to buy one. Ah, oh, that's a shame. But it's still a little something, Christina. Well, we've got everything to play for, it's early days. Sorry, I've got uh, tissues, it's fine. Early days. <laughs> Not that bad. The copper bin from James is next. Uh, 38 pound with me. 42 with me, still on commission. A 42 pound bed. A uh, 42 pound bid with me. A 42 pound bed. 44 pound bed is on the net. A 44 pound bed. Uh, 46, no, 46 pound bed we, on the net. Christina. Uh, it's a 50 pound. pound it is. Oh, we can stop well, making money. Is lovely thing. You won't be disappointed. A uh, 48 pound bed. Oh, Harry is working oh, far too well for you today. Pounds. Lady Luck is definitely on James's side today. Well done. I think I'm just going to leave. No, that's it. I have faith. I'm just, I'm just it's going obviously to be like a passenger. My, my round. <laughs> my round. <laughs> it will be tonight, I can assure you. Christina's next. Her David Anderson silver plated spoons. Come on, David Anderson. Come on. Uh, 32 with me on commission. Uh, 32 pound money. bed. W money. 34, 36 all still with me. Uh, 36 pound bed. Uh, 38 pound bed. Net. It's, uh, it's uh, gone wild. Bed. 40 anyway. Smoke on the bed. rising <laughs> from the monitor. <laughs> uh, 38 on the bed. Internet bed then for 38, 40 pound bed in the room. Uh, 40 pound bed is in the room at 40 pound bed. 42, 44. Uh, 44 in the room at 44 pound bed. Jen's bed at 40, 46, 48 now. Uh, 46 pound bed. Internet gets it at 46 pound bed. All of them at 46 pounds. Oh. oh. Don't stop there. Keep going. Yeah. Come on, Harry. Ha ha ha. He's got you a lovely profit there, Christina, and your highest so far. See, it is the Aesop's fables, daughters in the hair. Yeah. So, I'm uh, feeling yeah. decidedly uh, tortured yeah. yeah. at the moment. Yeah. You're struggling a <laughs> lot. <laughs> It's your World War II bomb case next. No sudden uh, movements, please. No. No. <laughs> I've got 70 with me at 75. I'll take that. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. 75, 80, 85. The, name, the eight name's after the room it. Takes oh. it. 85 pound bed. Got 90, 95 pound bed in the room. I've got 95 pound bed in the room. Got 110 now. It's in the room at 110, 120, 130 now. 130 pound bed. In the room at 130, 140 anywhere. At 130 pound bed. Uh, 140, James, 150. This is almost. I know, sorry, this is very really embarrassing. 40, it's a 150 sorry. anywhere. You should be ashamed of yourself. I should, be, should, be, should hang my head in shame. 140 pounds. Well done, James. That didn't bomb, did it? <laughs> Stop smiling. <laughs> Stop smiling. <laughs> Christina's Victorian necklace is up next. I've got 34, 36, 38, 40 pound, 42. It's with me at 42 pound bed. 44, 46, 48. Uh, That's 48 good. Bed is nice, room, just be a little bit. Bed. Bed I've got 55 and need. I've got 55 pound. What have you got? I've got 50, 50. I've got 60, 65. 
I'll six five in the room. No, six five pound bit. Come on, online. Room, Come on, six, five pound bit. It's all right. It's all right, Harry. Eight, seven, Don't five anyway. Do it. Uh, Come on, Harry. Bit. Come on, man. Get to the six five pound bit. All of them at seventy pound. It's that gets to the seventy. Another steady result, Christina, but you're still in the shadow of James's lead. Add a naught onto it, and I might be somewhere near you. <laughs> Attention! James's bubby pottery figures up next. This is your last opportunity now to make any more profit. <sighs> bring it on! Bring it on! Uh, thirty-six, thirty-eight, anywhere. Uh, Seventy-five. Uh, bit on the left. Seventy-five bit. Uh, Ninety pound bit. Never done. Magic! Keep going, Harry. Keep going. All the internet bids are flying in. 170, 180, 190. <laughs> Sorry, I... Can I just apologise? <laughs> can I, Christina, you're going to hate me. <laughs> no, Dave. It's nothing to do with me. Never. <laughs> the internet is going wild for this little chap. I'm as surprised as you are. What's happening online, Harry? Uh, 280 pound bid on the left. It must be quite a rare figure, must it? Uh, 300, 300 bid, 300 pound bid. Uh, 320 anywhere. Anybody in the room interested? Hold on, on the net then for 300 pounds. <laughs> Good <laughs> lord. Very, very well done, you. That is quite remarkable. A very handsome profit. <laughs> that, that is amazing, isn't it? Seriously, Very good. Well yeah. done, you. And to finish proceedings, are the oars from Christina. A uh, 28 pound bid with me, so 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40 pound, 40 pound bid, 42 anywhere, 40 pound bid. The market is rows. hot, isn't uh, it? Yeah. 40 pound I wonder bid. if it's got a boat. Uh, 42 anywhere. With me then at 40 pounds. Oh, that's very good. That's all right. Another respectable profit, Christina. You have made so much money today. Well, I just, it's, 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 it's embarrassing. Quite humble. It really is embarrassing. Uh, it's not embarrassing. You've done brilliantly. Go on, I, I'm again by your large magnum machine. Oh, good. Major. Major thing. Bit of fizz sounds good. What a terrific auction! Let's work out the sums. Christina began with £216.48 and, and after auction costs made a profit of £68.44. And Christina's grand total to carry forward is £284.92p. And James started this trip with £225.94p and, and, and has steamed past Christina with a huge profit of £390.56. And and wow! Braxton has stormed it. He is today's victor and has a colossal £616.50 and pence for the next outing. Well, that was a truly spectacular auction and Christina's got a fair so, bit of catching up to do. But I don't think we need to even...